Now, the second episode in this, our first volume, I see dates from an air date of January the 12th, 1965. That means that it was shot about a year, at least a year probably, after the first episode, which you've just seen. And, uh, of course, in the way in which television series are made, there's always a process that characters and story developments will add more and more colour and flesh to the raw bones of the story as the series goes along. And that was certainly the case uh, with regard to my own character. Lieutenant Gerard, you may remember, if you've seen the very first episodes that have been shown, uh, was originally through the goodness of the wardrobe department at our studio, bless their sweet hearts, uh, he was originally kitted out uh, with a traditional detective's raincoat. You know, the conventional American detective in those days always wore a kind of fawn raincoat and a, a b fairly broad brim fedora hat. Well, that seemed to me to be rather too conventional, too much, as we say in the trade, on the nose. And so at some point when we were shooting one of the early episodes, I believe we were in Tucson, Arizona, I, uh, I threw that raincoat and that hat away behind a bush and it was never seen again. <laughs> that accounts for the fact that I think throughout the whole of the rest of the series, you never saw Gerard with any kind of headgear and never saw him with any kind of coat, no matter what the weather might be like. Well now, this second episode, as I say, was aired on January the 12th, 1965, and is called The End is But the Beginning. Well, it tells how working as a trucker, Steve Younger by name, Richard Kimball's troubles are nearly ended when a body, burned beyond recognition, is found and people think that it's Younger's. Tired of Gerard's relentless pursuit, Richard Kimball decides to get word to the lieutenant that Steve Younger and Richard Kimball are the same man. In other words, he no longer exists. But the truck company secretary soon discovers that Kimball is still alive and already is strongly attracted to him, the ladies usually were, and she readily helps. But Lieutenant Gerard refuses to believe that Kimball is dead. He even admits his obsession. I'll talk to you more about that another day, about recapturing Kimball. And when the secretary steps in front of a bullet, which is meant for Richard Kimball, the fugitive chooses to take steps to save her life, even as Gerard grows closer. Our guests for this episode were Barbara Barry and Andrew Duggan, and the episode is entitled The End is But the Beginning. Richard. Richard, I'm going to drive you to the truck. No, I feel much better. You saved my life, that's enough. Oh, please, Richard, let me. Good evening, Miss Rennick. Oh, Lieutenant Gerard. The Fugitive. QM production, starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball, an innocent victim of blind justice, falsely convicted for the murder of his wife, reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house, freed him to hide in lonely desperation, to change his identity, to toil at many jobs, freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime, freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest stars in tonight's story, Barbara Berry, Andrew Duggan, also starring Barry Morse as Lieutenant Philip Gerard. Tonight's episode, The End is But the Beginning. man who has to run to survive finds respite sometimes in desolate places. For the moment, this man is Steve Younger, for the moment a truck driver. Yet today, within the hour, 
Steve Younger has a rendezvous with death. Everybody paid. It must be something about the weather. Money's running freer. Except, um, except for Henny Wilkins. He didn't have it this month. Mm. That puts him two months behind. And this is half of what Dykstra owes. Nothing from B&B &B and nothing from Stillman. You think I'll still have a job next month? Steve doesn't go away without those invoices. Oh, yeah, I was just going to take them out to him now. Uh, Steve, you didn't forget the invoices. I probably would have. I was wondering if you uh, remembered that new route to Coverton. Uh, I traced it on the map. Oh. Well, uh, a friend of mine bought tickets for a play uh, for tonight, and uh, we can't... <laughs> she can't go, so I just wondered if you'd like the tickets. They're all bought and paid for. It'd be a shame for them to go to waste. Would you go with me? Oh, thank you. I'd, I'd like to see it. Well, maybe we could have dinner. Be fine. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Not for you. Nothing against him. He seems like a nice enough sort of guy, but you know, one foot on the ground, the other on the first bus out of town. John, about these collections. Well, never mind that now. I'm trying to tell you that Steve. I just went out to give him the invoices. You asked me to. Now, I really think we should decide how to make these collections. Thanks a lot, buddy. Sam. Steve Younger. Oh, hey. Hi. How far are you going? About 20 miles. Oh, good. 20 miles closer. Not to home and mom and apple pie? No, just closer to whatever comes next. The only home I ever had was the army. I joined up to see them faraway places. You know, uh, Geisha girl, Lixaw, Plitty Plown Eyes. <laughs> Rats a ruck. Me, four years in a stinking canal zone. Huh? I got no mom anymore, no pop, nobody. The only friend of kin Sam Barlow ever knew was Uncle Sam. Yeah, I was uh, nephew number 17007171. Well, my ticket's to the open road. At least until I get shed or some of that. Hey, hey, look out! Come <laughs> on. 